Well, another uh, guy that you got into and one of the harder ones to replicate from my perspective uh, is definitely Dilla. And I, I really dug all of those little, uh, and this is all via Instagram, just watching videos of, of you na- really nailing uh, the feel, which is so hard, and uh, really getting into the sounds as well. So uh, that the latter of which I I always appreciate, uh, and I thought you did a really good job with that. But man, I guess tell me about the process of even sort of navigating that feel. Uh, I am I'm assuming you just had to play along with those tracks, uh, pretty extensively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, pretty much. I I had a really amazing teacher. He was, he's actually my he's like my all time favorite drummer. Um, like of all time, his name's Ray Garraway. Awesome. And he unfortunately passed away in 2013, but I got to study with him before that. And he, he drummed for like, you know, like, do you know, what? he did, he did like, it's not even the tip of the iceberg. Um, but did, did you, um, do you know the guy chaos, the rapper chaos? Maybe I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. He's a big Canadian rapper, so I don't know. Gotcha. It's not. It's not like <laughs> Kanye, Kanye style. Like yeah, like you guys have down in the states. Yeah. Um. But he he was a a freak on the drums. He was like uh, he was like he was bringing like Alvin mixed with uh. He studied with Efrain. You know Efrain Toro. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who taught down at MI forever and like he, he like Efrain and then he had like he was onto the Dilla while it was actually happening. Wow. He was doing, he was doing the drum and bass thing. Like when Jojo was just getting into it too. Like he was like, he had all these things going on and, uh, and just crushed it so hard. And, and so it was so inspiring to see someone kind of come in with the, the jazz hip hop drum and bass thing that he was like, I just wanted to be him on the drums. I still do. I wish I could, and the funny thing is when I'd be with him, he'd be like, I just want to be like Efren. <laughs> like, I just want to be like Efren Toro. So I was like, got all the Efren Toro, not all his books. I think he's got like 20 books, but I do uh, every day. I do like my stomping and clapping Efren Toro uh, exercises and try and, you know, you're clapping dotted quarters over st- stepping in five and all that. He's got a course out on, on drum channel, which is just so sick. Oh, nice. I'll have to check it out. I digress. Um, yeah, he was the one who was like, have you checked out? Well, it was actually a bass player that played with him who was like, have you checked out Dilla? And then he got me in touch with Ray. And that's when I started studying with him. And we were just hanging out our first lesson. And he was like, hey, put up a song called Climax by Slum Village. And I was like, oh, okay. And we rigged up the PA system. Yeah. And he sat down and he started playing it in the room. And I was like watching. He was like, how he was playing. It was like his sticks would like, freeze in certain spots and like uh-huh. and i was like oh wow like you're like and like how he would open his hi-hat and just everything about it i was like what is this like wow and he, and he was like he's like you know it took me two weeks to be able to place that one hi-hat after the open hi-hat and and i just had this realization that i was like I don't hear it as strong as you do. Like I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't hear it. Um, yeah. And so, and I wanted to be able to hear what he was hearing. So he kind of turned me on. He, you know, he'd give me a handful of tracks and be like, check out this track from most deaf, check out these slum village tracks, check out, you know, this stuff from the roots. And he kind of got me onto that stuff. And I would just like, yeah, I just would shed it. And, and then eventually the, that kind of turned into like, well, if you're going to do it, you should try and get the Sonics, you know, a little bit closer. And then I started kind of shedding my mixing and, and, uh, wow. and the grooves and, and it just kind of never stopped. Like I, I took a big break, you know, I didn't play or do any Dillavids for about a year and a half. I just recently started again and I'm just like, fall it. I like, I'm better at mixing now. And I, I hope I'm a little bit better at the drum. So it's like, all of a sudden I've like, I've fallen in love with it all over again. Kind of this last couple of weeks. I'm like, ah, this is so fun. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. just fun. It's just like, it's like these little Rubik's cubes, you know, cause he would just sit there and I don't know, maybe he sampled an old school break or maybe he played it in with his fingers, you know, every track's different. And, uh, but just to sit there and like listen through one of his beat tapes and be like, there's always going to be like four or five or six tracks that you're like, Oh, the, like, those are the ones I want to figure out. Like, uh-huh. you're, you know, cause some of them you just can't do on a kit. Like they're maybe it's like sleigh bells as the hi hat. And you're like, I'm not going to do that one. I don't, yeah. I don't have a sleigh bell stick. Like, I should yeah. get one, but like, um, but there's always ones that are like, are a kit 
and you know, you could get close and you want, I'm like, I want to learn first how to get those sounds. And then second, how to make it maybe in the wrong order, but like make it feel like that. And then try and try and get the sounds kind of as close as I can. Cause I, I've spent so much time in front of pro tools. I'm actually finally starting to get the hang of it. So I'm like, yeah, I want to get better at this. So it's right. kind of like, a, it's like homework as well, but that I love to do. So that's awesome. That's that's a uh, killer that he turned you on, I guess, to the to the slum village thing, because that was the first time I heard the Dilla stuff as well. Yeah. Um, and it's to this day, it's some some of my favorite stuff. Uh, and I, I started getting into some of his more solo stuff, uh, honestly, from watching some of your videos, because I was like, oh, shit, I guess I need to go hear this track. I'm kind of interested to revert back to the original and, and see what's right. going on with it, because it is peculiar and that's really cool that you had a teacher to physically and visually kind of give you a sense of how an actual drummer would recreate those, what would be unnatural physical movements. And he did it in such a, um, in such a physical way. Like he would teach yeah. so much about like the arc of his stick and like, he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd be like, just sit there, you know, playing 16th notes. And like, until it becomes a shaker that you're playing to. And I'd be like, oh, what does that mean? Like, uh, and then I'd sit there and I'd be like, okay, it's a shaker. And then I, you know, then I'd start playing. And then, then my hand would start matching my, you know, my, my other limbs. And I'd be like, okay, I don't have it. And then I'd, I'd like, he would, he would try and break my limbs apart. He's like, and, and same with uh, the bass player. who's one of my ultimate mentors and they played together. And so I kind of had the bass and drummer, ultimate bass player and drummer who were both kind of teaching me, um, the bass player still to this day. I mean, I, uh, he, he's like, he's the guy who calls me and he'll be like, your last video sucked. And you'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, I wasn't feeling your right foot. Like I, I did a video of uh, uh, actual, actual proof, you know, which uh -huh. I had to like, you know, it's not easy playing actual proof, Mike Clark. And no. Was, and I thought, you know, I thought I, I did okay. And he's like, nah, man, like your right foot, you just, I'm not feeling it. It's not heavy enough. You're not, you're like, you're not feeling it strongly enough. And I'm like, ah, you're right. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, so it's, he keeps me humble for sure. I'm Damn. like, but Quest, Questlove wrote on, he said it was dope. He's like, don't care. It's, it's trash. <laughs> it's trash. <laughs> so, oh um, man. 